Okay, it's the top of the hour. Welcome everyone to the Community Heart and Soul Sea Grant Program informational webinar. My name is Jane LaFleur and I would like to introduce you to our speakers today. I'm Jane LaFleur and I'm the Senior Director of Market Development with Community Heart and Soul. My name is Mark Sherman and I'm the Executive Director of Community Heart and Soul. My name is Eric Ortiz and I'm a senior associate with the training team here at Community Heart and Soul. And Sue, I think you're muted. <laughs> there we go. Oops. My name is Sue Lassard and I'm the town manager of the town of Bucksport, Maine. Great, thanks everyone. Uh, just some basics before we start. All of you are uh, in the webinar mode, and that means you are muted unless you're a presenter. We invite you to use the chat box to interact with the hosts and with the fellow attendees. We'll be monitoring that. And some folks behind the scene will be responding uh, as we go through this webinar. You're also welcome to uh, put questions in the Q&A tab as we go along. And then during the question and answer period, we will respond to those as best we can. If you have any follow-up questions, please email us at info at communityheartandsoul.org. And of course, check our website for the Seed Grant uh, guidelines and program description and all the information you need to apply for a Community Heart and Soul Seed Grant. So just a quick overview of this webinar. We're really excited to be launching these Heart and Soul Seed Grants to catalyze community heart and soul across the United States. We have almost 100 communities already that are doing heart and soul, and we want to uh, allow many, many more to take part in heart and soul because of these seed grants. Uh, the Heart and Soul Seed Grant Program provides $10,000 to support the implementation of community heart and soul. So in today's webinar, you'll have a brief overview of Community Heart and Soul and the model. We'll review the nuts and bolts of how to apply and what the program is all about. And then you'll hear firsthand from Sue Lassard, one of our Heart and Soul champions and about their firsthand experience doing Heart and Soul in Bucksport, Maine. Mark? Thanks, Jane, and welcome everybody to today's webinar. We're very pleased to have you join us and we really appreciate your interest in learning more about Community Heart and Soul and our seed grant program. Community Heart and Soul is a res resident driven process that engages the entire population of a town in identifying what they love most about their community, what future they want for it and how to achieve it. And as Jane mentioned, Community Heart and Soul has been field tested in almost 100 communities across the country from Maine to Washington. And our goal is to bring community heart and soul to hundreds of new communities. The SEED grant program, which is the focus of today's webinar, provides an opportunity for new communities interested in implementing community heart and soul to secure startup funding. One of the best ways to introduce you to community heart and soul is to hear from our founder, Lyman Orton, who with his three sons is the proprietor of the Vermont Country Store. So in the brief video that follows, you'll hear Lyman discuss the history and the vision behind Community Heart and Soul. Community Heart and Soul is a field-tested planning method for small cities, towns, and rural communities based on three powerful principles. Involve everyone, focus on what matters, and play the long game. Developed by the Orton Family Foundation, Community Heart and Soul helps towns move toward a brighter, more prosperous future, rooted in what matters most to the people who live there. The seed for Heart and Soul was planted by businessman Lyman Orton, who with his three sons is proprietor of the Vermont Country Store. Orton served on his town's planning commission when it was wrestling with divisive development proposals. Orton grew frustrated that decisions being made that would shape the town's future were without guidance from the majority of the residents. There had to be a better way. We call it community heart and soul, guided by what matters most. What matters most to whom? To the residents, to the way people live their lives. If our conversations focused on what matters most to our communities, 
then what conclusions would we come to about our town's uh, economic development and the future of this area? Any community can just stumble into the future. Uh, we have a real opportunity here to seek out and grow in a way that reflects the whole community's values and ideas. Almost any small town uh, would benefit from going through a community heart and soul process because it brings the residents of the community closer together. And as they get closer together, the differences tend to fade away and the things that they care about the most, the things that matter most, replace the differences. They become more trusted in one another. They become more collaborative in their decision making and in their discussions about their community. And they become stronger believers in their community. So people will continue to live there, new people will move in, and people will invest more in their community. Community Heart and Soul begins with a four-phase, step-by-step process that brings residents together to identify and honor the unique character of their town and the emotional connection of the people who live there. In the first phase, which we call Imagine, Heart and Soul teams are formed to build awareness, interest, and commitment in all segments of the community and develop a plan to reach everyone. In the second phase, Connect, residents record stories and these are used to develop heart and soul statements that reflect what they love most about their communities, along with the hopes and, uh, hopes and goals that they share for their towns. During the third phase, plan, residents develop action plans to guide future town planning based on the priorities that they identified in their heart and soul statements. And finally, in the fourth phase, act, the heart and soul statements um, come to life. They're adopted by town and city councils and incorporated into comprehensive and other plans. Now, community heart and soul is much more than a four-phase process. It's really an ongoing philosophy of getting everybody involved and focusing on what's really important to the community. Think of it as an ongoing practice, not a report that sits on a shelf. I'd like to uh, share a few of the uh, benefits of community heart and soul. The process conveys a whole range of social and economic benefits to towns and small cities that implement the model. And a bit later in this webinar, you'll hear from Sue Lassard, the town manager of Bucksport, Maine, who will discuss some of the positive impacts that Community Heart and Soul has had and continues to have in her community. And to learn more about the nuts and bolts of Community Heart and Soul, we're going to be adding links in the chat window so that you can download our intro book or view pre-recorded information sessions on Community Heart and Soul. So at this point, I'd like to hand it back to Jane, who's going to provide an overview of the Community Heart and Soul Seed Grant Program. Jane? Great. Thanks, Mark. As we mentioned, this is an exciting new opportunity for more and new cities and towns across the U.S. to become a Community Heart and Soul town. As a grantee, you will receive a $10,000 matching grant. And as a community, you'd be expected to um, provide a dollar for dollar cash match. You also will be expected to provide project coordination for the heart and soul team and work with a community heart and soul coach who will provide training and mentorship throughout the, the process. So why would you apply? Well, first of all, you'll receive a $10,000 grant if you're selected. This program is designed to help small cities and towns. And as Mark ex explained, there are many benefits. You also become part of a heart and soul network of cities and towns who have gone through heart and soul or are, uh, are in the process of doing the heart and soul model. So you become part of the community practice. You're never doing this alone. You, you can always rely on other folks that are working through heart and soul and as well as the coaches that um, help you throughout the process. Eric. Thanks so much, Jane. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about some of the important pieces of um, the Heart and Soul Seed Grant Program. First of all, being the eligibility. So you've probably heard this already a little bit in our presentation, but we really are looking for resident, strong resident leadership. Um, community Heart and Soul efforts 
must be planned and led by at least five residents who are directly affiliated with and reside in the community where the grant will be, uh, where, the, where the heart and soul effort is going to happen. Um, and we're gonna put a poll in the chat right now. Um, in terms of eligibility for sizes of towns, we're actually looking at um, US cities and towns that have a population between 2,500 and 30,000 folks. Those are the folks that, those are the towns that are eligible for funding. Now, in some cases, communities that are close to, but outside those specific populations can be considered, but that will be on a case by case basis. Um, and I'll also just add here that applications that it involve more than one town are eligible. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in one second. And then also a lead organization. So applicants must designate a lead organization that will play a significant role in supporting community heart and soul. Lead organizations can be from a variety of sectors that could be local government, community organizations, ec economic development groups, um, revitalization groups and preservation organizations, and any civically and culturally focused nonprofits. Uh, in terms of the nonprofits, uh, 501c3 status nonprofits um, organizations must be in good standing with the IRS to be eligible. And then also a fiscal sponsor. So a fiscal sponsor must be designated in order to receive the grant funds. Grant, grants cannot go to individuals or groups that don't have a formal organization. And last but not least for the eligibility, um, this is really, uh, this grant program is, is a seed grant program. So this is meant to be for cities and towns that have not yet started or gone through heart and soul. This is for new towns. We want to spread heart and soul all over the country and make sure that all new towns coming on have an opportunity for this. And now a little bit around the criteria. Um, we really want communities to demonstrate their readiness and their commitment to using community heart and soul to plan for their community's future. So the applicants will be reviewed based on these criteria. The first one is really just, we want a demonstration that it's the appropriate timing and relevance for the community. Is this the right time for your town? Is this the right time for the residents? Are they excited about this opportunity? So we just want to make sure that it's the right timing for your, commu your specific community. And then also the uh, ability to initiate the community heart and soul process within six months of receiving uh, the grant. Uh, we just, like I said, this is a seed grant program. We really wanna use this to catalyze folks' possibilities and opportunities to get started with community heart and soul. And I hope I don't sound like a broken record. We're really looking for strong resident leadership. Uh, leadership demonstrated by a dedicated team of residents with clear, a clear plan to further engage other folks in the community. One of the biggest things in Heart and Soul is making sure that all the folks in the community can be heard. And then a commitment. And this is, we really are looking for an evidence of strong and specific commitments to community Heart and Soul from the lead organization, what the, the governing body and the fiscal sponsor. And this is also a cash match grant opportunity. So we're looking for communities that have the ability to raise local dollars to support community heart and soul. Uh, one -on -one, a one-to-one -one cash match is required. The full match does not need to be secured at the time of application. Um, and just a, a note on, on the match, the, the match can come from any variety of sources from, it can come from other grants, it can come from the town, it can come from a strong nonprofit in town, it can come from any variety of sources. And please reach out to us if you want to talk more about that. And then also for applica applications involving more than one municipality, the narrative must demonstrate the reasoning for a multi-town effort and describe how towns intend to collaborate. What is the reasoning behind there being more than just one town? 
Um, all, all community heart and soul efforts have to have a geographic focus. And so we just wanna know more about how and why if you want to have more than one town involved. And then last but not least, we're looking for a lead applicant to drive the whole process. The lead applicant or organization um, serving as the fiscal sponsor must be designated in order to receive the grant funds. So that's a little bit about the eligibility and criteria and I'll send it over to Jane so you can let us know about the application process. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> it's an echo. Um, the, this is an online application. So we don't, uh, we're not asking you to send us paper applications. Everything we want to receive from you can be done online. So if you go to communityheartandsoul.org and look at the seed grant button, you can apply online. Um, there's also a way of downloading the PDF so you can print out the questions in advance and talk it over with your team so you know exactly what you want to put in that online application. I just want to walk you through the application and some of the sections of it. So as Eric mentioned, there's a lead organization you need to tell us about. Is it the local government or is it the community organization or is that economic development group or maybe a preservation group or a Main Street organization? That lead organization needs to be designated in your application. Um, in many cases, it will be the local government. Next, there's a community narrative. We want to learn about your community. We want you to tell us who lives there. What is it about your community that makes heart and soul appropriate? What opportunities do you see? Who are your partners? And most of all, what do you hope to achieve through community heart and soul? So we ask you to type that into the application form. There are also letters of support that you can upload and you need to upload into the online application. And we have templates available in the grant guidelines booklet. Um, the templates will show municipal support. So as Eric mentioned, we need to see that the municipality is supporting this application if they are not the applicant. And also a letter of intent for the matching fund commitment. So as Eric mentioned, we don't need to have the funds in hand when you apply, but we will need to know where they're coming from uh, and they have to be in hand when the grant funds are distributed. The application uh, review and selection process is, is very simple. Um, if and when we, review, when we review your application and we decide that it looks good and we wanna talk with you more about this, um, we ask you to prepare for an online interview or a virtual interview by completing one of two activities from the Getting Started booklet. Um, and this is all on our website. Um, the two activities are, one of the two activities are who lives, works, and plays in your community, or the four elements of readiness, and this is described in the workbook. And then you participate in a virtual interview. Those activities prepare you for the, it, for the interview. If you're selected to receive a, a grant, then you'll be notified. We'll ask you to participate in an orientation, submit some final paperwork, and contract with a heart and soul coach. The timeline. So we have uh, decided to have applications accepted on a rolling basis. There's not one timeline that you may or may not meet. It's a rolling basis. Uh, at the applications are due at the end by the end of each month. So if you submit by 11:59 p.m. Eastern Time on the last business day of the month, your application will be considered the following month, and we'll make decisions the following month. Um, and we really encourage you to apply early because our funds are limited. So now I want to introduce you to Sue Lassard from the town of Bucksport, Maine. Bucksport, Maine was a community and still is a community heart and soul town. And she is the town manager and is going to describe why they did heart and soul and what benefits they received from it. Sue? Thank you, Jane. Um, and good afternoon, everyone. 
Um, as introduced, I am Sue Lassard. I am the town manager for the town of Bucksport, Maine, and happy to be here this afternoon um, to talk a little bit about Heart and Soul and what it has done for our community. Um, every good story, and Heart and Soul is all about stories, has a who, what, when, where, and why. And who are we? Uh, Bucksport, Maine is a, a community of approximately 5,000 people. We're located on the Penobscot River in central Maine. And up until 2014, for more than 80 years, the town of Bucksport was a mill town. A mill town provided good paying jobs and uh, community security. And in December of 2014, the mill closed abruptly and 500 jobs were lost and 40% of the community's valuation uh, was lost as well. I came to Bucksport in uh, August of 2015. The mill had closed. There had been some other issues. Um, several town managers had come and gone in a short period of time. And uh, when I was hired, it was sort of to put the wheels back on the bus. Uh, there were a lot of people who were interested in doing something to help their community. But the what do we do was the question. And at that time, a resident brought me a workbook of community heart and soul and asked me to read it, which I did. And the light bulb came on and um, our path forward uh, from our difficulties um, was sort of set. Um, as an introduction to the elected officials in my community, we invited um, then coach Jane LaFleur to meet with uh, my elected officials, as well as those who were running for elected office in my community because it coincided with an election season to explain heart and soul and how that might help us uh, figure out what the people of the community wanted for their future since we were at a, such a difficult time in our present. And um, I'm happy to say that uh, the council at their next meeting voted unanimously to become a heart and soul community and appropriated $20,000 uh, to contribute to that effort which if you think about it, um, we're a community that had just lost 40% of its value and money was a significant issue, but investing in our future was a bigger issue. And that $20,000 was certainly um, well spent. Um, we started off with our community development director uh, being the lead uh, organizer and that didn't last very long. He, his work more time than allowed for heart and soul. And so we um, engaged a, a part-time coordinator for our heart and soul program um, who steered it through the two year process that we went through. Uh, the, and it's been the difference for us in how we've moved forward. The heart and soul process um, the beauty of it is that it's, it's bottom up, it's resident driven. The community provided some funding to assist in it helping, but we didn't micromanage its results or in any way interfere in those. The, the, what bubbled up from our community, from all the voices was what was most important to our community, to our residents, what they wanted for their future. And that's another of the best parts of Heart and Soul is everything is driven from the positive. Your narrative locally is all about what you like, what you want to save, what is good. The, the things Mr. Orton discussed, which are what, you're, what you have in common, not what you have as differences. And Heart and Soul has done that. We worked through a two-year process involving hundreds of our residents. Um, we ended up with a 82 individual projects that have been taken on by all sorts of municipal groups. We, are, uh, we have our heart and soul statements are posted in our town office lobby and on the wall of our town council chambers. They were formally adop adopted by the council and 
they are the lens through which we filter all of our decisions. Uh, is what we're looking to do consistent with what we, not what we think, what we know the people of this community want. And we know because they told us, they, they met in groups, large and small and, and street gatherings and neighborhood parties and all sorts of ways that we engage and told us their stories. And those stories told us what was important. So we're several years beyond the, the end of the formal um, heart and soul program, but heart and soul is, it isn't something we did. It's something that's part of us. And even people who have come to our community since heart and soul, we went through it. They have the benefit of heart and soul because it's the way we do business. It's, it's, it's about the positive. We're not a community that can't have hard discussions on difficult topics without being respectful to each other. Heart and soul helped us do that. And, and so all of these things that are now embedded in our process have helped us through things like the pandemic and the, the very difficult times that the community has, has encountered, we're better able to cope and to, to reach out to, because now we know who the majority of our people are. We, we know we have connections to them in ways that we never did before. And so I know this sounds a little dramatic, but and it, I don't mean it to, but I wouldn't recommend that anyone start what we did, which is sort of, you know, your identity is gone. What do you want to be next? But if it can work for us in a, in as difficult a time as we were in and as, as big a potential for it to all go wrong, which is to sit and wait for somebody to save us or fix us or do something. Instead, I, I, I call it that we were the cavalry and, and heart and soul is the force we rode in on <laughs> because it sort of is, um, has what has set us up to be able to uh, move forward well. And, and from a purely selfish practical viewpoint as the town manager, Businesses want to locate here. People want to move here. We're gaining population. Our, our schools are getting more students. That's not what happens to most dying mill towns. But if you're a community of hope and positivity and who has, an, has done that heavy lifting, the planning work to understand what, that's where people want to be. We have a, a land-based aquaculture project who is, which is locating in our community. And when they came to us, one of the main reasons that they talked to us was that we knew who we were. We knew that their development would be accepted. We knew all of those things. And we knew those things because we had asked the, the most important people. We had asked the people of our community what it was they wanted. So I won't go on and on. I'm, I, I'm sure they'll have my contact information. If anyone has specific questions or sort of how we did what we did and, and why we're continuing to be sort of on the front page in a positive way seven years after we were supposed to be dead. <laughs> then um, a, a huge part of our rebirth is connected to the way we do business now. And that is a direct result from Heart and Soul. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. That was wonderful and a true testament to how Heart and Soul has made a difference in, in your community and can do the same in others. So thank you for, for participating. Um, we want to look at some of the questions that have come in and feel free to add more. Um, and I'm just looking at them now, Eric. So if you see some that have um, come in again. Uh, there was one that uh, repeating the population. It's 2,500 to 30,000. But if, as Eric mentioned, if you're slightly above or slightly below, let us know. Get in touch. 
don't assume that's hard and fast if you're slightly above or slightly below. We want to talk to you because our goal is really to bring on as many new heart and soul communities across the U.S. You know, we and I especially believe in this program. I've I've coached heart and soul communities. I've I've been a heart and soul coordinator, and I see the positive changes that this brings to a community. So just get in touch with us and talk to us and we'll see if it's a good fit. Eric, do you see any questions that we should be responding to? Yeah, we have a few coming in. Um, uh, many of them are related to the population. So again, if you, if you are under the 2,500 threshold or above the 30,000, um, I would encourage you to maybe reach out um, and send us an email and we can talk a little bit more in depth because it really will be, it really depends on your community. Um, we really, you know, Community Heart and Soul is, is tailored to each community and each community's needs. So it really depends. Uh, that would be info at communityheartandsoul.org, info at communityheartandsoul.org. Um, and yes, the fiscal sponsor can absolutely be a 501c3. Um, sorry, Jane, I'm totally just rolling through some of these questions okay. that are coming through in the chat. Um, have I Here, missed I, any? I, I want to just point out that you can download the grant guidelines booklet and print it out. It's on our website and that answers so many of these questions. It really talks about eligibility, the grant cycle, the application process, the selection process. All of that information is in this very short uh, grant guidelines booklet. Yes, there's a question about if our town is a seasonal town and the population is under 20,000 for, you know, nine, 10 months out of the year, um, would they be eligible to apply? Yeah, absolutely. Under 20,000, absolutely, yes. Yes, and uh, uh, questions coming in, Jane, about the, the time commitment for a project coordinator. Um, and yeah. if, it, if, it, if it's, uh, if we suggest that it would be an, an existing employee or a new, a new employee, uh, do you have any yeah. thoughts about yeah. that? Yeah, and I saw Sue, Sue may want to chime in too, but let me just fill in a little bit. Um, most heart and soul communities hire a, a project coordinator and you can use your grant funding for this. Um, they hire a project coordinator as a contracted person. So it's not an employee, you know, on your employment roles, it's a contracted person. So did you want to uh, chime in on how Bucksport did that? Well, just to say that um, when we started, uh, our economic development director was going to take on that role and it, it quickly became obvious that, that it, with his other job duties, the heart and soul, um, many of the meetings are, are evenings, weekends, because they're, it's a volunteer driven um, group. And so they, it, it, that didn't work. And so they hired a, a part-time, it was a 20 hour a week, but what made it work is that there were a very strong group of core volunteers who assisted with everything from um, downloading stories and processing all those kind of things that are the, the sort of heavy lifting pieces of this because um, 20 hours a week wouldn't have been enough um, yeah. if she hadn't had that kind of, yeah. but the, the reason that we, uh, the other reason we sort of divorced it from municipal employment was we could provide funding, but we didn't want to be seen as tainting a process that is bottom up, resident driven, not governmentally controlled and freedom uh, of having a staff person who was not a government employee I think helped with that in, in terms of making sure that that we were kind of hands off in the storytelling or in the get, gathering information because that that truly meant that what we were hearing and seeing was was directly from residents without 
anything from the rest from those yeah. of us who are government so that I, 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 that's great that was our our experience it doesn't have to be everyone's yeah. but most thank you so most communities do hire a coordinator we do say that it becomes a 40 hour a week job I also talk about Bucksport um, where the coordinator was paid for 20 hours a week um, but many many volunteers filled in the other 20 hours a week um, two gentlemen in particular were the other part of that coordination team. And then the whole team uh, chips in many, many hours um, to carry out the process. It is an 18 month to two year process, depending on the community. Um, and I think, Eric, you mentioned another question about. Uh, maybe there are that, a couple, there are a couple yeah. more that came through, Jane. So um, some folks are asking about what are some of the eligible expenses for the $10,000. Yeah. And th that could be anything from project coordination, as we've been talking about, to coaching. Uh, every heart and soul community um, is uh, required to work with a coach. So that could go to that. It could go to also any engagement activities that you want to do directly with residents. Uh, those types of activities are also um, uh, you know, fair game in terms of what you can use the 10,000 for. Uh, here's an interesting question, um, and I don't know we necessarily have an answer, but uh, Jane, if you have any ideas, there's a question about if the town doesn't have a town manager, um, uh, who would you go to uh, as a leader in town to kind of get this idea off the ground? Yeah. Do we have any ex uh, examples of that? Uh, we do. Uh, we, and we've had communities that haven't had a town manager, it's, but often, I mean, I, I think in almost every case, there's either a, a select board or a town council and, and you would go to them because there has to be um, a letter of support from the municipal governing body that says, we know that this is going on in our community and we support it. It's, remember, it's that top down and bottom up, um, even though, as Sue described that, government didn't want to be steering the heart and soul process, they're still at the table. They're still participating uh, and they know what's going on and they, they honor the, the process that this is happening in their community. Um, so if there is no town manager, then you, you cert, it isn't the town manager, that, that's the hired employee. They don't make the decisions for the community. It's the governing body. In some cases, it might be a town meeting as well. Um, but usually Great. there's a board of selectmen or a town council. And yeah. they're called different things in different parts of the country. Right. It depends on what uh, part of the country you're in. A yeah. couple of questions that have come through just really quickly. Uh, this is being recorded, including the question and answer. So feel free to share that with your networks. Um, unfortunately for this opportunity, in-kind support does not count. We do we are looking for communities that can come through with a cash match for the 10,000. Um, let's see, uh, a couple more questions. The project coordinator being an employee of a business improvement district, I think that is absolutely fine as long as they're primary role is to uh, work on community heart and soul. I think that would be totally fine. Um, and then Jane, a question about um, folks are wanting how to measure success and if there are specific evaluations that are gonna be done uh, during the planning and implementation of heart and soul. Uh, is that, does that mean, are we measuring their success or are they measuring their success? I believe the question is directed towards us, like if we have evaluations yeah. that we would be. Uh, not at this time, except we want to hear your stories. And we, you know, we have um, heart and soul coaches that are around the country that you can hire to, to work with you through this process. And they also want to share your stories. And we as an organization want to hear how it's going and how um, you know, what are the good changes that you're seeing in your community? And that helps grow more heart and soul towns because as you hear the story of Bucksport, you say, boy, you know, we want to do that too. We want to have, we want to have that kind of community engagement and, and community outcome. So um, yes, I, the, I mean, most of all, we want to hear all the good changes that are happening in your community. And it's about story gathering and story sharing with us and with other communities. 
Yes, and we also do have some tools for towns if you would like to track your progress um, as you go that's through true. the heart and soul process. So I think that's another key piece. So there's um, a question about hiring your co your coordinator and your coach. So let's talk about that real quickly. Um, you are, as we said, asked to to hire a heart and soul coordinator or figure out as Susan's town did how that coordination will happen between the volunteers and a hired person. Um, and that's your decision on who you hire. Your team hires that person and the organization that's the fiscal sponsor does that. Um, and then, and we have sample job descriptions and all of that. So you're not recreating the wheel. Heart and Soul coaches are available on our website um, and they are all over the country and many of them are training a, a Heart and Soul team virtually these days. We have to, um, but there's sometimes there are some right in your own backyard. So we can put you in touch with Heart and Soul coaches that are interested in, in um, coaching many more communities and we have many of them. And, and the and the, the fees they charge is that's set by them. That's not set by us. So you negotiate that fee with the heart and soul coach. Yes, and I would just uh, also want to um, just reiterate that all of this information is not secret. It is all on the website in great detail in terms of costs and coaches and project coordinators. Now, uh, maybe uh, just for clarification, I'll, I'll let folks know the project coordinator is the person in the town on the ground that will be doing the work with all of the residents and the coach will be training the, the um, project coordinator and all of the folks on the heart and soul team as they go through each piece of the process. There's the coach there to deliver the trainings and then also the coach is there to support, answer questions, provide resources. Um, so there are a lot of different roles that the, the coach can help with. And then the project coordinator or coordinators and, and the town um, take, the, take the lead and go through it. Um, the, how many hours a coach is needed, uh, it really varies. At a minimum, it will be uh, the coach will deliver trainings for phase trainings for all the folks in the community. And then it just really depends on how much the community um, needs to engage with the coach to answer questions and uh, help, help the community figure out what the different activities are and who to reach out to and all of that. So it really kind of varies. Um, let's see. So yeah, go for it, go for it, Sue. I, I just wanted to mention that um, what we found in terms of funding the overall Heart and Soul program, the town contributed $20,000, but Heart and Soul itself was very successful in obtaining additional grants from community and economic development agencies in the state of Maine, who provided another $25,000 over the course of our project in grants that helped us to sponsor some really awesome activities that got people together and and to provide a heart and soul building on main street for people's stories and things where it was a gathering place in the community but it, it's it's not limited to just it, it's a great way to get grants heart and soul is a is a brand if you're thinking about this in terms of a known entity that assists um, communities and so grant funders love it in terms of um, providing funding to assist communities going through this beyond what this grant program um, would allow to help also. So there's, you're not limited by where you get your money or how, um, but I, I know from personal experience that grantors were very happy at what we were doing and subsequent to that, we're extremely successful now in obtaining all sorts of other grants, $2.5 million in the last five years um, because we're a community who knows who we are. So that, that is, it's just a little tip that if you're thinking about this, that the price tag is not overwhelming because there's uh, many avenues to look for money. Yeah, thanks, Sue. That's 
great information. Um, let's see, other questions? Uh, Eric, do you see some that we haven't answered yet? Uh, I think we're getting through most of them. Some of, the, um, some of them we're answering in the chat as well, folks. So yeah. keep your eye on that. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, all about the coach hours and the cost of the coach. That's really between you and the coach. Um, all of our coaches have been trained by us. They're certified or about to be certified heart and soul coaches. So they know this model. They know how to train your heart and soul team. Um, and at, at the very least, they are coaching you and training your team at phase one two, three, and four, and then working with you throughout the process to troubleshoot, to find new ways of doing things, to uh, reach out into the community. Uh, as uh, was mentioned during the earlier part of the webinar, this is about involving everyone and focusing on what matters and playing the long game. And so in phase two, your team is reaching out into the community, collecting stories, listening to people, interviewing people, translating that story data into heart and soul statements, which Sue explained how they use them in Bucksport to guide decision-making and guide um, what's happening, what matters to the community. Uh, can, there's a question, can a bank be a fiscal agent? Uh, I think so. As long as the community is involved and the government supports the process and you have a team of heart and soul people, that means as a fiscal agent or a fiscal sponsor, our grant money would sit at the bank. Um, and if it's the bank that is your the lead in your community, that's fine if they're engaged and involved also. So we need people from all sectors that are part of your heart and soul team. Ah, yeah, here's a good another, question. There, oh, there's go another ahead. question. I'm sorry. Sorry, we're getting we're getting all these questions. We're trying to make sure we get through as many as we can. Uh, there's a question on the costs, the overall, the whole the whole shebang, all the costs. So there's a there's a sample budget in the getting started workbook that you all can look through, and that really breaks down each category. It talks about project coordination. It talks about coaching. It talks about engaging, it talks about events, and it really breaks everything down um, just from a high level. And again, this is something that really is going to be very uh, dependent on your specific town. But from a high, high level, we say that it's approximately 57,000 per year for the two year, for each year for the two years. Um, and those costs are broken down in a little bit more detail in the Getting Started Workbook. Right. Thanks, Eric. And a, a lot of communities find ways to uh, borrow and have donations of time and supplies. And as Sue mentioned, the they had the Heart and Soul headquarters on Main Street in an uh, empty storefront. So uh, there are all kinds of ways to, to stretch those dollars. Um, there was another question about if somebody wants to be trained as a heart and soul coach, the answer is get in touch with us. Info at communityheartandsoul.org. We are uh, recruiting new coaches for a new cohort of coaches. So get in touch. Yes. And we have someone who had to join late. Uh, this is all being recorded. If you uh, were had to jump on late, um, then you can check out the recording that will be available after, after this is over. No, we have some folks who are interested in being coaches. That's great. We're always looking for new coaches to join us. So we only right. have a few more minutes. I don't want to cut anybody short, um, but we also are available for any other questions that we may have missed. Um, remember to check out our website. The grant guidelines are on the website. There's also a series of um, uh, webinars from, that were done at the end of 2020 that you can listen in on about every phase of heart and soul and, and what's needed. So those are good to know about so you can um, you know what you're applying for. We really want to see heart and soul grow across the country. We're committed to this process. We know it's a, a positive uh, 
uh, action for a community to take. And so all of our heart and soul communities have seen the benefits of, of those. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Could this be used towards developing an economic plan if the town is satisfied with their current comp comprehensive plan? Sue is shaking her head yes. Sue, do you want to say anything more about that? Come I, off actually, Heart and Soul um, provides the underpinning for about any planning effort that you're going to do because it creates uh, a conversation platform where um, whether it's economic development or recreational planning, or we've done, since Heart and Soul, we've done six major planning efforts in this community, including our updated comp plan, a downtown redevelopment plan, a marketing plan. But Heart and Soul provides the foundation that the rest of these build from, because the foundation is all about how the people of your community interact with each other and how organizations interact with each other and that's what heart and soul, the, one of the biggest things that it provides is that foundation from which any kind of planning is more effective because you have more voices available to you in, in that effort. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so for if there are any um, questions that we're missing, we apologize. Uh, please do make sure to reach out to us, um, info at communityheartandsoul.org, and we'll, we'll make sure to answer some of those questions, especially for some of the folks who have really specific questions to your town or what your specific uh, circumstance might be. Um, please absolutely uh, reach out to us and we can, we can, we can talk more. Here's a quick question about a business improvement district and can the efforts be focused solely within the boundaries or is it a citywide application? It is a citywide application. This is to talk about what the community as a whole uh, values most and, and uh, cares most about and what matters most to them. Um, but I've also seen uh, that the what turns out to matter most is that district or is that downtown and people recognize how important that is to their community. So we don't presume what the answer will be or what the outcome will be or what the direction your community will go. Uh, it's really after listening to the stories from your community members and the interviews with the hundreds and hundreds of community members that you learn what matters most, and it may indeed be that business improvement district. Great. All right, I think that is gonna do it for today. Eric, I'm just gonna add one point. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I just, there've been so many great questions. Um, I just wanna point out that there, uh, we have things called town portals on our website. There are dozens of these, and they're uh, very short, concise, two-page write-ups of the outcomes of communities all over the country in terms of economic and social benefits that we've been talking about. I'd really encourage folks to go and look at those. You'll get a very good sense of the kind of successes that a lot of communities have achieved all over the country. You know, uh, Sue gave us a great example of what happened in her town of Bucksport, but there are many others that you can learn from. So I'd encourage you to use that. And I just want to also stress uh, something that Eric, both Eric and Jane have said, which is the seed grant program is an opportunity to take the first step. And we are gonna do everything in our power to uh, facilitate that process. If you have questions that weren't answered today, follow, us, uh, follow up with us at info at communityheartandsoul.org and we'll do our very best to get back to you as quickly as possible. We would love to welcome you into the family of Community Heart and Soul. Great, thank you, Mark. And thank you, Susan and Eric. Really appreciate the time everybody's taken to be on this call. We've had hundreds of questions and comments and hundreds of people involved. And we have recorded this. So if you need to watch it again or want to watch it again, we'll provide that link to all of you. And thank you again. And please uh, bring this program to your community and consider applying for a seed grant. We know that it makes a difference.